Hi, and thank you for joining me today for this Hatha Yoga Flow. Uh, practice for the spine and the hips. So we really do introduce uh, quite a few backbends, um, but also release into the tightness of hip flexors, front of the thighs, the quadriceps, also into the glutes and around the outer hip area. Uh, so always taking the practice at your own pace, your own level, and making any modifications that you need to throughout. We are going to start in supported fish, a very nice uh, passive backbend. And if you don't have blocks at home, you can of course use a thick pillow, uh, but have that uh, lengthways or uh, horizontal uh, at the top of the mat. And if you do have blocks, have one on its highest setting and one on its medium setting lengthways. And that goes underneath the shoulder blades. So, I will see you in Supported Fish. You gotta keep on breathing If you wanna make sense of it all We will not fall So when you have found your way, hello, hi Leslie. When you have found your way into the supported fish, I wonder if Wesley came over because I said fish. <laughs> you can choose to have your legs uh, along the mat or maybe the soles of your feet together and butterfly. The arms are out to the side and really just allow uh, the chest and the rib cage to mold itself over your prop. So if you've got any corners of your block sticking in, make sure that you move so that that's nice and comfortable. The arms come out to the side of you with the palms face up. Notice the different rotation when you turn the palms face down there. And you can keep the eyes closed or open, whatever feels comfortable, but just having a single point of gaze, the drishti, up above you. Make sure the head and the neck are fully supported. You are not having to hold the head or the neck up and give all of your weight into your props, whether that is the blocks or your cushion or pillow. And as we begin our practice, allow your breath to become rhythmic, steady, and equal, breathing in and out of the nostrils, noticing the breath as it comes in, where does that breath travel to, and observing the breath out, really letting go, emptying, releasing any tightness, tension that you might be holding in the face or the body. As you begin to focus onto your breathing rhythm, letting all thoughts of distraction that might pull you away, becoming present, being mindful, being aware of your body, being aware of your thoughts. Allowing each inhale to travel to the fingertips, to the toes, to the top of your head. Allowing the exhale to allow a deeper sense of softening, release and letting go. Maybe at this point, you 
you might like to invite an intention for your practice. Maybe it's an intention that you have each and every time you come to the mat. Maybe it's a different intention each day. Maybe it's a new year intention. As this sequence was created by our students, they provided their least favorite postures, their most enjoyable postures, and the postures that they wanted to improve upon. So maybe you use our January theme of growth and improvement, commitment and focus to practice as your intention. Taking a deeper breath in, and if the eyes are closed, just gently blink those open and wiggle the fingers, move the wrists, take the hands to the thighs if you have butterfly, lift those legs together. Place the soles of the feet down, hip width apart, and just rearrange the body so that you can start to pull yourself away from the block. So you're going to pull your elbows as much as you can underneath your shoulders. And from here, just lift the gaze, looking along the body between the knees. And if you like, you can then extend the legs along the mat, pointing the toes, stretching into the tops of the feet. This is where you're going to push into the palms, into the elbows, and start to come away from the block. And the block might move, that's okay. And you might just give yourself a little wiggle there. So keeping the abdomen drawing in towards the spine, but the chest is opening and you're pushing the chest forward and up. And you might take the gaze up towards the sky. So it's a fish variation here with the arms out to the sides. Nice and slowly, just roll over to one side, take those blocks all that proper way and lie down all the way into Shavasana. Feel that there's nothing underneath the spine and you can really nestle the upper back and the shoulder blades into the mat. Give them a little massage and draw the knees in towards the chest. Roll and massage out through the lower spine into the sides of the body, into the waist, circle the knees around. And as this practice is for the hips as well as the spine, just gently mobilize into the hip joint as you take the knees out to the side. Bring the soles of the feet down onto the mat, hip width once more, arms are out to the side. And just windscreen wiper the knees left and right, rolling onto the inner and the outer edges of your feet. Repeat a couple of times more, exhaling as you release them to the floor, inhaling as you bring them back into centre. and then roll over to one side. Take your time, you've been down there for about five minutes. So bring yourself back up. Come to the back of your mat. And let's find a wide-legged child's pose, taking the knees nice and wide, big toes to touch. And letting the body Come between the thighs here, reaching the arms forward. The arms might go a little bit wider of the mat. They might come in towards the center. That's wherever they feel good for you. But try and reach the sit bones back towards the heels. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. And then melting the chest down. Maybe the head comes to a block or cushion towards the mat. And as the forehead rests against the earth, at this moment, once more to visualize and imagine your intention. Growth, improvement, commitment, focus. Just 
walking the hands over to the right side of your mat, crossing the left hand over the right, pulling the left shoulder down, left hip to heel, twist the child's pose. Just a breath in and out there, bring yourself back through center, take the left hand down, right hand crosses over and reaching, drawing right shoulder down, right hip to heel. Breath in, breath out there, walk the hands back, exhale once more into child's pose. Inhale, bring yourself up into tabletop, bring the knees back into parallel, and the wrists come underneath the shoulders. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room there as you just move the hips, maybe a circle or two. Let's come into a cat and cow variation with the breath and the toes all working as one. So tucking the toes, dropping belly, opening chest for your cow as you breathe in, exhaling, releasing to the tops of the feet, rounding the spine, pushing away through the palms and the tops of the feet, the knees lift about an inch away. Releasing knees, tucking toes, mobilizing through into cow as you breathe in. Exhaling, rounding spine, tops of the feet, pressing, lifting knees. So again, just finding mobilization, all three things moving as one. Last time, pressing up, holding, breathing, lowering knees and lowering into puppy pose, releasing the hands forward, melting the chest down. You might rest on the chin here, you might rest on the forehead, you might rest on a block or a cushion. Keep all ten toes connected, pressing into the tops of the feet here. Hips are nicely lifted, really giving the upper body all of the weight into the earth. This is slowly lifting the gaze and looking forward, coming onto the forearms, kneeling forearm plank here, keeping the hands nice and wide, pressing into the forearms and the elbows, tucking the toes if you wish to intensify the strength training here of a forearm plank. Keep nice and low, head, hips, heels, all in one alignment. We're not up here and we're not down here. Breathing in, breathing out, lowering hips. If you can keep the toes tucked, we're gonna come into Sphinx and then release right and release left foot, all 10 toes touching into Sphinx pose here. Remember, modify your Sphinx. If that's too much of a back bend for you, bring the elbows forward. All the elbows are underneath the shoulders. Breath in, breath out. And rolling down through the spine. Bring yourself all the way into your prone posture. Big toes touch. Relax the heels out to the side. Give the hips a little shake and a sway. Let's get into the hips. Bringing your right leg out to the side of you into a half frog. And you might need to place your leg on a bolster or again a cushion or a pillow, but try to allow the weight to come into the glute, the hip, try to relax the glutes here. All five toes of your left leg are pressing down, the leg isn't rolling inwards. And flexing that right foot in that half roll position, you might like to come up into your sphinx as well. So you get a back bend and hip opening.
And for those of you who want that deeper inner groin stretch, you might wish to extend that right leg out. So I'm going to be a little bit uh, sneaky here and do it because I've got my plant pot in the way. So I'm going to move my foot in front of the plant pot. But however that feels for you, the toes are facing the same way that you are. And you're extending that leg away, trying to pull the inner thigh down towards the mat. Staying for a few breaths. If the back extension isn't for you, please come down and you work with just the leg. Bending at the knee or bringing the leg back and coming down. So swaying out once more. Taking your half frog variation. Knee comes out to the side. The knee is in line with the hip. You've got a 90 degree at the back of the knee and flexing into the ankle. Staying here if you like, or coming up into that Sphinx variation, but making sure that the left shoulder and right shoulder and the weight is equal through both hands. We don't want to be dipping onto one side. Always making the modification that works for you and your body and how you feel on that particular day. Never pushing your place, uh, yourself into a place of pain or risk of injury. And again, making that modification of the extended leg and you can extend from the knee, so pushing the sole of the foot out, toes face the same way you do, and dropping into that left hip, keeping the sphinx if it's uh, comfortable or lowering down. And then lowering the body, bending at the knee, bringing that leg back and just swaying out through the hips. Reaching back, right arm takes hold of the right foot, draw the heel in towards the buttock as you extend the thigh and the knee away. Drawing hip flexor down, getting that deeper hip flexor stretch and quadricep stretch. Thigh stays down onto the mat. Any breath, breathing in, breathing out. Keeping the abdomen pulling in towards the lower spine, making sure that your core, front, back and sides are all engaged. Relax the leg, let it float down, change sides. Left arm takes left. Lift up the knee and the thigh, and then lower it down. Deep exhale as you pull the heel in towards the buttock. Slowly release the hand, let the foot flow down, bring yourself back into that neutral prone position. Let's go for the full variation of a bow. So you can, of course, make modifications as you need to here. The thighs may just stay down, the chest might just lift, or you might lift the legs and the chest coming into bow, flexing the feet or pointing, whichever feels comfortable but drawing those knees in towards one another. Nice and slowly, lower down, and rest on the cheek, hands stay by the hips there. Pulling yourself back into tabletop. Rounding through the spine, dropping into cow, and just get that mobilization once more. So let's come into our dragon. So bringing your blocks in if you have those handy. You don't need blocks, of course, but they do help to fill the space between you and the earth. Right foot comes forward and just take it to the outer edge of your mat. And you might like to wing that foot out to the side. You might like to have the toe facing forward. All choices, of course, dropping through the hips. I'm going to start to pull back into half monkey, keeping the heel where it is. 
Starting to straighten through that right leg, digging the heel in, pulling those toes back. Stay nice and low with the body. The hips just move backwards and forwards. Not forgetting to breathe. The last time we pull back, pull those toes back towards the shin, bend that front knee if you need to. Reach the fingertips away. Exhale over. Stay nice and low here, and you can come onto your forearms or onto the blocks as you come forward into low lizard or low dragon. And choosing options for yourself, keep the left hip lifted as much as the right. Nice, uh, stable pelvis, tucking the back toe is an option here as well, lifting up, straightening through the back leg and rocking forwards and backwards. You can drop the knee here to the mat or you can come up high lizard, drawing out to them back towards the spine, opening up. Nice, and release the knee, slide, right leg back, left leg comes forward. Choosing the winged option, or foot faces to the front of the mat, dropping through the hips, give yourself that wiggle room, and then pulling hips back, exhaling, digging in heel, pulling toes back, straightening into that left leg if it feels comfortable to do so. You might start to feel that into the left hamstring, the back of the leg. So if you start to feel popping in the back of the knee, keep the softness into the knee bend. Last time we pull back, reach the fingertips forward, lengthen the spine. Exhale over. Staying nice and low, bending into the front knee, coming down onto the forearms or onto the blocks. Make sure the shoulders are level, hips are level. Making variations, tucking toe, lifting up the back knee, rocking forwards and backwards. Keeping the abdomen lifted towards the spine and then coming up into that high lizard. shoulders away from ears. Nice and slowly release the knee, release the toes and gently pull yourself back. Let's take that wide leg, child's pose once more. Bring the knees nice and wide, big toes touch and hands reach out in front of you. Release through the spine here, release through the hips, inner groin, outer hip, glutes. Start to walk the hands back towards the body, coming into tadpole. So the knees go nice and wide, as wide as is comfortable for the inner thighs. Big toes touch behind you, buttocks on the, on the heels. And just notice here how the pelvis has shifted. You might drop the pelvis uh, backwards. And just notice that anterior and posterior tilt. Draw the navel back in, push the pubic bone forward and keep the spine nice and long here. So feel the stretch, maybe coming into the inner groin. Going to come up into a little toe stretch and a balance here. So coming forward onto the fingertips, Tucking the toes underneath you, try to keep the heels together here. The closer the feet and the heels are together, the more challenging this posture is. Knees staying nice and wide and try not to let the heels roll or sway back behind you, but keep pushing them forward. The hands might come to the knees, I'm a bit off balance today. And you might bring the hands in towards the heart. Relax the face, keep the spine long, keep pushing those knees out towards the side. That's going to help you 
in uh, our balance later. Hands come down, lift the hips, turn the toes inwards and the heels out. You're at the back of the mat and just take a fold here, so sway from side to side, take hold of the elbow. Release the body over the thighs. Bend the knees should you need to here. It's better if you bend the knees more and get the, uh, the belly and the chest all the way down over the thighs than struggling to straighten the legs and have the body out here. So keep those toes facing forward, knees are over the middle toe, they're not rolling inwards. It's all about feeling what your body is telling you, the messages. From here we come into the lasana, so we widen the heels out to the outer edges, toes turn out, dropping hips between the heels and you can stay as high or go as low as you need. Elbows come on the inside of your knees. Hands in towards the heart as you lengthen the spine. Engage pelvic floor, our mula bandha. Draw the abdomen in, lengthen spine, relax face, shoulders. Beautiful sun shine coming through there. Nice and slowly the hands come down. We'll take an arm balance here of crow pose, and maybe crow pose is not in your practice, but if you are proficient at crow, you might have the way of getting into it, but let's break this down. So what we're doing is we're bringing the hands down in front of us in line with the shoulders. We're trying to keep the hips up nice and high, and we're bending into the elbows and maybe the knees just rest onto the upper arms. Starting to take the gaze a little bit forward, not down between the hands, but start to rock the hips up and forward. And you might start to feel the engagement there of your abdominals and the strength in your shoulders as you lift one toe at a time. And that might be enough. And that would be your crow pose today. Or you might then start to think about getting the knees really tucked up into the armpits on top of the upper arms and you might start to lift one foot and the other coming into crow that way. Releasing after a few breaths. Well done. Walking the hands forward, lifting hips, turning toes in, pedaling out into downward facing dog. Nice and slowly, release one heel at a time. Give yourself a little stretch, twisting either side. And then release both heels together. If you feel tightness into the hamstrings, bend those knees, really drop them down, pressing the chest back towards the thighs. Always bend the knees if you feel tightness in the spine or the legs. Nice and slowly, look forward, walk the hands to the feet and the feet to the hands. Come into the center of your mat, lift up into a half lift. Hands might come to the shins or onto the thighs. Lengthen the spine, keep the weight into the front of the feet, crown of the head reaches forward, abdominals are lifted, spine is long and strong. Nice and slowly, fold from the hips, Exhale, full deep forward bend. Nice and slowly, press through the feet. Bend the knees if you need to. Inhale, bring yourself up to standing. And exhale, hands come down through the center line of the body. The thumbs rest at the sternum of the heart space. Close the eyes if you wish. 
And just feel what it's like to stand on both feet as you release the hands into mountain pose, the dasana. Fingertips are reaching towards the earth. Shoulders are relaxed. Let's come into an upward facing salute, little back bend. So bringing the feet together is more challenge. Bringing the feet hip width apart gives the pelvis a little bit more space there into the back bend. We're going to lift the arms up towards the sky. Palms might be shoulder width apart, but the palms are facing one another. For more challenge, again, bring the palms together or interlacing the fingers and single index fingers together. We're going to lift up and back as if we're going over a barrel. The barrel is in the center and the lower spine. Pushing hips forward, lift out of the lower back. Make sure you're feeling the, the strength in the front of the body as well. Inhale, bring yourself back into center. And exhale, the hands come down by the side of you. Well done. Take a few moments before we come into our balance. Our balance is tree, and then we'll move into uh, dancer pose. So tree pose, stabilizing through the right leg. Options of the legs are by the ankle with the toes still down on the mat. Wrapping it around the calf or taking it above the knee and bringing the foot in towards the thigh. <laughs> so you're going to push the thigh against the foot and push the foot against the thigh, bringing the hands in towards the heart center there. Or challenge out to the sides or again above the head. Keep long through the spine as if you're reaching the hands away, not compressing into the lower back, not flaring the rib cage, and feeling grounded through that supporting leg. Spread the toes rather than grip them. Strong lower thigh above the knee, pulling up. Good. Find the balance, relax the face, release the hands and release the foot. Always come back to mountain pose. Try to stand for a few breaths without fidgeting. And take in everything that that posture then gave you, switching to the opposite side, stabilizing through the left leg, choosing your option, whether that's down by the ankle, the calf, or up at the thigh, and of course, if your balance isn't great and you need stability, you can always hold on to something. It might be a chair, might be the wall. <laughs> I'm a bit off balance today, so don't watch me. Look at your drishti, your single point of focus. Maybe I'll come to the ankle option on this side. Stabilizing through the foot, the ankle, the leg. Breathing. Be comfortable here. It's a great posture. It's also one of the big favorites. Nice and slowly release the hands and release the foot. Again, coming back into mountain pose. We have our dancer pose, Natarajasana. So this is a back bend and standing at the front of your mat, again, choosing the option of feet together or slightly uh, apart. We're going to draw in the right knee in towards the chest. So try not to let the shoulders come back behind you. Again, choosing your option of having uh, you, you stabilized away from a wall or from a chair. Mobilize into that ankle, give it a little bit of work out there, and then flip that foot back so you can come in, into that prone posture that we did when we were lying down on our belly. 
reaching left arm forward, changing the grip to the inside of that foot, and then start to push the foot into the hand. And you start to keep the chest lifted, gaze is lifted. If you look down, you tend to go down. So pressing foot into hand, reaching fingers away, smiling, relaxing, staying strong through the supporting leg. Breathing. Coming down when you feel ready and returning back to mountain pose to feel both feet grounding you. Let's go, other side, drawing, heel, that thigh into, into the chest, keep the chest over the front of the body, we're not leaning back here, shoulders above hips, hips above heels, take it back into the quadriceps stretch if you can, try and draw those knees together. I'm going to feel that into the hip flexor and the quadricep. We're already starting to open up into this side of the body and the shoulder, changing the grip so the hand comes on the inside, reaching the arm forward, keeping the chest lifted, gaze is lifted, pressing foot into hand, lifting, lifting, lifting. Strong supporting leg. Smile, it's a beautiful expressive pose. Nice and slowly. Come back when you need to. Releasing the foot into mountain pose. Take a few moments. Whenever we do back bend balances, they tend to increase our heart rate. So you can probably feel your heart rates increase there. Let's come into a little warrior flow. The arms raise up for our upward salute. We're breathing in. We're breathing out, folding. Breath in, half lift. Breath out, release down. Step back, right leg. Find a high or a low lunge. And take that left leg back into plank. Find your choice of connecting vinyasa, whether that's knees down, chest down, cobra, or your chaturanga, upward facing dog, back into downward facing dog. Nice and slowly lifting the right leg. Sorry, yeah, right leg. Up and back behind you. And bring the knee all the way through to the chest and sweep that leg in front of you. We're going to open up into warrior two position. Find your warrior two, grounding through the feet, strong through the legs, long spine, relaxed shoulders, softness in the hands and the gaze. Reach over long and hand comes down onto a block or on the inside of that foot, onto the fingertips. Reach up to the sky with the top hand. Drop the hips just a little bit more. You might come into extended side angle from here. Of course, an option. Bicep towards the ear. Push the back hip forward. Coming into a bind. So we're going to release the hand behind us. It might just touch our spine. I'm going to thread through underneath the thigh, our front hand. You can always use a strap here if the hands don't quite meet behind the body. And the gaze might be down at the front foot, straight ahead or up towards the sky. Roll the rib cage open. Open the top shoulder. Release the hands, frame the front foot, and send that leg back into your three-legged dog. Lower down, exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg steps forward between the hands. 
Left leg steps forward between the hands. Exhale into your fold. Inhale, press through the feet, bring you up to standing. And exhale, hands come back into the heart center. Let's go left side for that bind. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees if you need. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back, left leg. Find your high or low lunge here. Sweep the hands forward and step it back into plank. Find your connecting vinyasa. Back to downward facing dog. Take a few deep breaths. Now lifting up your left leg. I'm going to do this from the reverse. So you're going to see what it looks like from behind. Bring that leg forward and open it up into your warrior two. Again, dropping through the hips, bending through that front knee, grounding through the feet. Shoulders are relaxed away from the ears, the softness into the arms. Reach over, hand comes to the block or to the mat, lifting up top arm. Extended side angle, bicep towards the ear, palm faces down. Find the breath. Release that hand behind you. It might come to the spine, it might come to the hip. And the front left hand comes through and under the thigh. It may take hold of the fingers, it might take hold of the wrists, not for me. But you may have a strap available too. Now I'm going to open up left. Right side of the body, <laughs> there we go. Right side of the body. Nice and slowly release from the bind. Turn onto that front foot. Hands come down, sweep the leg back. And release it into downward facing dog. Take a few breaths there, you can take a child's pose if you wish. Let's come into pigeon from here. So we're going to bring the right knee to the right wrist. Exhaling, hips come down. Staying upright for a moment to just get into the position, making sure that your hips are nice and stable. And then if you like, you can reach over. The right thigh. You can use cushions and blocks to fill the space between the buttocks and the earth here. A few breaths in pigeon as you really release into that right glute. Slowly walking the hands back towards the knee in an upright position here. If the spine is, you know, too much for you to come up, bringing the shoulders back up in line with the hips. Stay nice and low here with the chest. We're going to bring the hands by the front knee, tuck the back toe, lift the right knee away and send it back into a figure of eight. Leg comes down, downward facing dog. Left knee, left wrist, pigeon on the opposite side. Oh, I've just seen a little ladybird in front. Oh, hello. Sorry, I got distracted by a ladybird. <laughs> Drop the hips a little bit more, feel the weight of the body bearing down and then bringing the body down towards the thigh. 
soften here, really allow the glutes and the pelvis to relax down, make sure that the toes are energized, the foot isn't sickling as you bring the toes forward for depth and challenge. Reminding yourself you can fill the space between the buttock and the earth with a block of fission. And slowly walking those hands back into the upright pigeon variation. Hands come back by the shin, dropping shoulders, dropping hips. Hands come down to ground, you tuck the back toe. You're going to lift the knee, send the leg back. And just give that leg a little wiggle out. Exhaling, the foot comes down into downward facing dog. This is where we're starting to slow down the practice now, coming towards the end, lowering the knees, bringing the belly down to the thighs, hands come back behind you as you just melt into child's pose. Rolling up through the spine, come into kneeling, and let's come into one of our peak poses for the practice, which is frog pose or mandukasana. So going sideways on your mat, you can always pad out the knees underneath you, but the knees go nice and wide. And we did this already in a half frog. So there's a 90 degree bend at the back of the knee and a flexion through the ankles and the toes are facing to the sides. Dropping belly over bolster or a cushion. Maybe the belly comes down to the mat. My floor is absolutely freezing. <laughs> and notice where the resistance point comes for you in those inner groin areas, maybe into the back. You might feel it into the hamstrings or the inner thighs. A few more breaths here, really give the weight into the frog posture. This is our last one before we come back onto our backs. To come out of frog, rock yourself forward, bring the hands down, really push weight into the hands, bring the big toes to touch behind you, and then pull yourself back into that tadpole variation. Hands come down as you lift the knees and shins and come into kneeling. Well done on those frogs. Swinging the legs around and coming to the front of your mat, let's take it nice and slowly to roll down onto our backs. Make yourself warm and drawing the knees in towards the chest. Notice now as we return onto our backs where we began, how the spine feels. Maybe just move the knees around a little bit, give yourself a lower back massage. Roll the shoulders, give yourself an upper back and shoulder massage. And then gently opening the hips. Notice how they feel after the hip practice you've given me today with the warriors, the vines, the frogs, <laughs> the dragons. Bring the soles of the feet down onto the mat. Take a moment just to rest through the pelvis. Take the feet wide, drop the knees together. Toes turn in, heels turn out. Soften everything here, no muscle engagement. 
relax into the joints. We will toe the feet into parallel. Drop the knees right and left, just a little bit of a twist. The arms might just fall out to shoulder height. Be soft through this movement here. As you exhale, the knees go over. Inhale, they come back. Exhale, over. Inhale, back. Introduce the head and the neck if it feels good. Head goes left, knees go right. Inhale, knees go left, head goes right. Once more. And well done for your practice today, your wonderful balances. And sending the legs long. Let's come into a short Shavasana to close our practice. So making sure that you're comfortable here, using props as you need to. You might have a bolster underneath the knees or blocks underneath the knees, maybe a block underneath the head, eye pillows, cushions, whatever you need, blankets. Arms are out to the side, the shoulders are spread so you can actually feel the center of your spine. You can bend the knees if you like, if lying down flat is not comfortable. You can close the eyes or take a soft gaze. But this time is for you to be at peace, be quiet, be still. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be still. And I'll let you know when it's time to come back around. But for now, remain present. Have that breath and bodily awareness. This is where all of your hard work, your hard input into the practice and your efforts, you see all those benefits in. This is where you rejuvenate, you replenish the fruits of your labor.
Taking a deeper breath in and a sigh as you breathe out. Bringing your awareness back into your surroundings, onto your mat and back into your body by wiggling fingers, wiggling toes. There's no rush ever to come out of your Shavasana. You take as long as you need to awaken. Choosing to stretch the arms up above the head, back behind you, stretching the legs away. Breathing in, giving yourself a big yawn, stretching the face. And bringing the knees right and left in towards the chest. Take time now to roll over to one side. You can pause there if you like. If the eyes are closed, you can keep them closed as you gently press yourself back up to seated. And just make sure that you're comfortable in your seat for the last remaining minute. Bring the hands into Anjali Mudra at heart center. Sit nice and tall through the spine, relax and soften through the legs, the feet and the hips. Notice how you feel, observe all of the benefits that you have had from your practice today, mind, body and soul. Return back to your own personal intention, maybe one of growth, improvement, commitment and focus. Blink the eyes open and thank yourself for your practice as I thank you.